हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर मयूर सहायता एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एब्डोमेन एनाटॉमी एब्डोमेन व्हिच इज द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द ट्रंक इन दिस वी विल डिस्कस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट द स्किन ऑफ द एब्डोमेन एंड देन इन डिटेल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द अंबिलिकस सो लेट्स बिगिन आवर टॉपिक स्किन ऑफ द एब्डोमेन कैन टॉलरेट एनॉर्मस अमाउंट ऑफ अ स्ट्रेच it is having the highest capacity for tolerating the stretch let's take some example as like uh, in a pregnancy when the fetus is grown inside the uterus it can grow up to any extent in case of the obesity in which the fat is accumulated so much and the skin can undergo a uh, enormous amount of stretch then the third one ascites in which the fluid accumulation is there and abdominal skin is under stretch so these are the example in which we can say yes abdominal skin is under stretch but even though it can tolerate because deep fascia is not there so it can stretch out at any any extent so let's discuss about uh, umbilicus in this uh, lecture so we will go uh, in detail about the umbilicus first of all definition of the umbilicus what is umbilicus so we can say it is the scar present on to the anterior abdominal wall why it is called as the scar because if the something tissue injury is there and if it is healed then fibrosis occur and we call it as a scar but here why it call it scar because during the fetal life here umbilical cord was attached and this umbilical cord after the birth it is fallen off so the remnant yeah that's why it is known as the scar because of umbilical cord attachment was there it is fallen off and the remnant is known as the umbilicus now what is the level of this umbilicus what is the level if we pass the transverse plane yeah parallel to the ground then uh, at what level it is located then remember between the l3 and uh, l4 that is the lumbar third and the fourth vertebra you can remember at this between the l3 l4 yeah there is a presence of the intervertebral disc okay fine and but this l3 l4 will not be there if the person is having the pendulous abdomen or you can say obese person this level can be down also because if the tummy yeah this abdomen is down then the umbilicus is located below so it is located at the lower level than this level yes so in yourself what is the level you should find out fine now what is the clinical importance of the umbilicus clinical importance you must remember water shed line yeah schematic diagram i am drawing here so you must remember with respect to the lymphatic and the venous drainage there is a water shed line why water shed line what is the meaning so if we pass a transverse plane and the above side of the skin having whichever lymphatic vessels or venous drainage they are going upper side of a lymph nodes or veins and from to the lower side the lymphatics and the veins going towards the downward side of the lymph nodes or the veins simple that means venous drainage and lymphatics above the level of the umbilicus going above and below the level of the umbilicus they are going or draining below but it is at the level of the skin no doubt inside the visceral organ lymphatic vessels venous drainage they pass there is no watershed but at a superficial skin level we can termed as a yeah that is a watershed line yeah so you can also say that uh, there is one shed is there here the river is going up here the river is going down the fluid is going down fluid is going up okay fine now what is the level means uh, here which level of uh, nerves are supplying so that is a thoracic t10 now yeah that t10 now supply it is not the level of the umbilicus don't confuse the level of the umbilicus is at the level of the lumbar vertebra but if you are asked what is the nerve supply from to the umbilicus then it is a t10 segment the t10 segment is basically the neuronal supply of the umbilicus yeah 
means sensation from here is carried out by the T10 thoracic nerve. Fine. Now you must remember through these umbilicals, three systems are attached. And what are the system and through which they are attached? So you must remember first of all uh, GIT system. How it is attached with the umbilicus? So see the diagram here. Yeah. So intestine. Yeah. From here there is a one duct, which duct is connecting it to the umbilicus. This duct is known as the vitello intestinal duct. Vitello intestinal duct. This duct actually communicating the intestine with to the umbilicus but uh, this duct is obliterated it should be obliterated yeah if it is not obliterated then it may produce complications what are the complications the first complication is if small intestine goes inside if the duct is present yeah you can say this is the proximal part of duct this is the distal part of duct which is towards the umbilicus and if it is patent this small intestinal the intestine is diverted inside which is known as the Macaul's diverticulum yeah and uh, if this part is uh, not diverted and um, vitello intestinal duct is completely obliterated proximally as well as it is completely obliterated distally but the middle part is basically intact then it is known as the known as the anterocell yeah then it is known as the anterocell fine the another system which is attached with to the umbilicus is the excretory system so excretory system how it is attached if the umbilicus is there and urinary bladder is there and urethra is there so here also there is a one connection with to the umbilicus which is known as the uracus. This uracus is also obliterated but if it is a patent this will result into the fistula which is known as the urinary fistula. So the two system we have completed and the third system is the vessels. Here there is a junction of the portocavalar anastomosis. Porto cable anastomosis junction is over there means a uh, particular vessels are going into the inferior vena cava and another vessels going into the portal vein that's how porto cable anastomosis also occurs at the level of the umbilicus so if the portal hypertension is there then portal hypertension these veins around the umbilicus they are actually dilated the veins around the umbilicus they becomes dilated and the appearance is like uh, that caput medusa hair like appearance yeah which is known as the caput medusa so in the portal hypertension there is just dilatation of the vein but if there is a obstruction of the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava then this watershed line can break down okay fine now in which condition water flows in which direction if the superior vena cava obstruction is there, so through the other vessels, the blood vessels which will come into the inferior vena cava, the blood will flow from the down to upside. And if the inferior vena cava obstruction is there, blood can flow from to the upward to the downward direction. So that is all about the umbilicus in today's lecture. Thanks for listening.